In this worksheet called VLOOKUP Approximate, we need to look up information to put into column E. It's going to be a reduction rate based on the table that we're seeing in column H and I. In Excel, there are multiple lookup functions. The two most commonly used ones are VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. And by far, VLOOKUP is most common. The V means vertical. We want to look up information vertically in a table. The table to the right here has information in its leftmost column that indicates breakpoints for a reduction in the cost of an item here. If we go to cell E3, what we want to calculate here is the reduction rate for the amount in D3. And if we look at the table to the right, most of us would probably surmise that the number that we want to get here is 3% because that value hasn't reached 1,500. When you're using a VLOOKUP table, it's probably best to have the table nearby, but you can use a VLOOKUP table where the table is located on a different worksheet, even in a different workbook. But if you want to test the answers immediately and review what you've done, it's best to have the table nearby. By definition, the VLOOKUP function will compare information with the left column of a table, and then get answers out of other columns. Sometimes a VLOOKUP table has just two columns, as we see here, sometimes more than that. If you have not seen a VLOOKUP function or any lookup function, you might say, well, couldn't we use an IF function here? We could in theory, but it would be quite lengthy and quite difficult and very difficult to debug and to correct. So the VLOOKUP function will allow us to take the value that we see here in D3, in effect, compare it with the entries down the left-hand side. When we come to a value that's too large, like 1500, we'll revert to the previous entry and then go into the column to the right to get the answers. Sounds like a lot is going on, and there is. We don't have to say much with the VLOOKUP function, though. It provides us with all the arguments that we need. And to make this more visible, I'm going to zoom in as well as make the column wider so we can see this more clearly. And this is an example of where we use the VLOOKUP function to come up with an approximate answer. None of these entries in column D probably match up these. Now they could, but most of them don't. So we're not trying to match up this exactly with the data. We're trying to match them up with the breakpoints. So let's start with equal VLOOKUP. The VLOOKUP function has three, sometimes four arguments. The first one is, where is the value that we're looking up? In this case, it's D3. You can type it or click on it, comma. Now we refer to where the table is located. And the table's over here, and we simply select these cells. And we'll show you a variation on how to do this as well. That's the location of the table, comma, column index number we see displayed below this. Which column of the table has the answers? It's column two. Now, literally, it's column I, but it's the second column of the table. And we're going to have our answer here as soon as we press Enter. You might be thinking, do we have to put in that right parenthesis? Doesn't Excel require that? Excel does, but if you have only a single set, it'll do it for you. Press Enter. There we are. 3%. This value has not reached 1,500. It isn't 4.5, but it has passed 1,000, so it's 3%. If we wish to copy this formula downward, let's take a look at it again. I'm going to double-click this to edit it. We do have a concern here because this table reference, if we don't make a change to it, will become H4 to I9, and then later H5 to I10, and so on. We want to make this reference absolute. We can do this by manually typing dollar signs or simply press the function key F4 to make that address absolute. We don't want it to change as we copy it down the column. Pressing Enter here doesn't change that first entry, but now when we copy this downward, do it for just a few cells. Let's check out some of our answers here. Here's a 337. That didn't reach the 500 level, therefore there's no reduction at all. 
2399, getting close to that 2500, but hasn't reached it. It has reached 2000, therefore it's 6%. Situations like this require that the data in the left column be in ascending order. If the data isn't, here and there you will get believable answers. Some of them might even be correct. It's up to you to make sure that these are ascending order if you expect to get correct answers. This is an example of using the VLOOKUP function to come up with what's called an approximate match. And sometimes these tables are quite large and many times they contain more than two columns. An alternate way of doing this that might make it simpler in construction is if you know that there's nothing else in column H and I, and let's say you determine that there won't be, we can make our original variation here of the table reference be a lot simpler. Instead of this entry here, we can simply drag across those two columns. And the entry H colon I means columns H and I. We could complete that entry and then drag it downward a few cells to see if it's still working. It is. And then completely drag this down the column by double clicking in the lower right hand corner. We've just seen how to use the VLOOKUP function for what's called an approximate match. And after completing this, of course, we could readjust the column width to display the information that way.